Hello, what an eventful week it has been. And yes, it's a week because turns out that daily posting is not sustainable for me, especially when I get really, really stressed out about things that are beyond my control, which is exactly what happened this week. And I've decided that I'm not gonna feel guilty about not posting every single day. I'm going to post, I'm going to hope twice a week, but we shall see how we go. So let's catch you up and tell you what's been going on in the journey of thyroid, which is now also the journey of the pituitary and the adrenal, hence my stress. So when I saw my doctor to understand, you know, the thyroid fun, she explained one particular blood test that she was going to do. I then got my blood taken, took a couple days to get the results, and I got the results, and they were what she explained to me was expected. But then the next day, I got more results for things that I wasn't expecting. And the little information bubble that they give you said that they are very abnormal, like really abnormal. And when you Google these things, because there was zero other context provided, guess what? It ranged from tumor on the pituitary to tumor on the adrenal to damage on a bunch of different things and the resolution for most of them was some sort of surgery so like either remove some stuff from my kidney area or take out some stuff from my brain either way freaky freaky stuff now don't worry everything is fine because as it turns out the test that was done was done on purpose the way that it was done which of course i knew that part um why else would they do it right but the explanation that the lab was given was different than what the doctor intended so long story short i'm fine but instead of just knowing that i got automated results that told me that things were not fine very far from it and i was left to stew on those results so not gonna go into more specifics because honestly i've recapped this in my brain so many times that it hurts but suffice to say that i think it was on tuesday instead of doing literally anything else i cleaned i organized the pantry i work i think i organized everything i could organize in the kitchen so the good news is the kitchen is clean <laughs> um the bad news is that i feel like I, other than cleaning and organizing, was not very productive this whole week. So, it is what it is. But what's the moral of the story? Well, at least for me, was the moral. The moral is, ask questions. Um, this entire thing started with asking questions. Literally, let's recap, for five years I've been asking questions. And sometimes I was made to feel like... I really shouldn't be asking these questions. Other times they just were glossed over, but I didn't feel anything, any negativity, but never did I feel like I was encouraged to ask those questions. So my advice to you, as it was from the very, very first post that I put up is trust your own body because you know it and no one else does. So if you feel something is off, keep asking the questions. It's okay, even if the doctor that you're asking the questions to does get annoyed with you. Because guess what? It's their job to answer your questions. And it's your job to look after yourself. Nobody else will do that. I think it's okay to assume that everybody goes into any sort of issues like this with the most you know, positive intentions. I mean, doctors get into this game because they want to help people. And I truly believe that. But I also believe that they are busy. I also believe that they don't look at the entirety of our health history and they don't listen as well as they need to. I think that it's expected that doctors are going to maybe not pick up all the information that in retrospect they would have. I mean, in my case, I think it's a little ridiculous because it's literally been many doctors in five years, but I'm willing to 
just take a deep breath because today I've had a good day. I'm feeling good. Um, but I'm not going to lie. Like this past week has been pretty freaking annoying and, and painful. I didn't sleep well. I, yeah, it was just, it was terrible. Like the not knowing is what was terrible. And I think I would have been so much, I would have felt so much better if, well, first of all, I was told I was getting this particular blood test done. Like I wasn't. Then it would have been better if when I got the results, there would have been some guidance as to what they mean. Instead, there was the range of what is normal, a big red exclamation mark next to my results that said, this is not normal, and that's it. And the link that they gave to explain what the test was, was this generic write-up that I have since found on literally every medical website. So it's not like someone bothered to explain it in a way that a patient would understand it. No, it's just, you know, something that is in a textbook, I'm guessing, I don't know. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it is. Um, point is, is that was frustrating. And I, I do consider myself a strong person. So even though I was freaked out and I know that I research things too much, I love a good rabbit hole, I still am able to handle things like this much more easily. But it just makes me think about someone who has had a worse experience, who doesn't have the kind of confidence I do, who doesn't feel the comfort, um, you know, about asking the questions for whatever reason. It's irrelevant, frankly. But I think about those people, those women especially, and like that's not okay. It's it's not okay that we have to rely on our own research and being, frankly annoying or dogged, one of my favorite words, and pursuing the answers until we get one. That should not be our job. And that sucks and I don't have an answer, but I just want to encourage you that if you are watching this video because you have some thyroid issues or you're thinking that you might have some thyroid issues, or frankly, because you're like, you know, something is off and I want to Google other people who have felt that something was off. What happened to them? Like, if you're any of those people, just take a pause. Write down everything that you've been wondering about. Make an appointment with the doctor. And don't leave until you ask all the questions. And I know it's going to be hard because when someone else gives us signals that we interpret as oh my God, this person's bothering me or they're annoying or whatever. It's it's hard, like we're human. We want to please people. We want to be liked. These are all very, very natural things. But when it comes to our health, you have to make that tough decision. You have to think about what are the trade-offs you're willing to make. Are you going to be, you know, annoying and maybe be the person the doctor talks to their partner at dinner <laughs> about like oh my gosh this girl came in today and she asked all the questions you know what who cares who cares it's their job to help you it's your job to take care of yourself and you need to do whatever you need to do to get past the discomfort and ask the questions that you need to ask and then the other tip that i'm going to use from now on which i ironically actually pretty much implemented but it still didn't work is when you're at the appointment take notes piece of paper is fine your phone is fine i actually even in this first appointment with the, when the endocrinologist i said that oh, i'm just gonna take some notes um and i use my notepad on my phone and the intention is that well first of all you capture all the things that are important to you you know, the doctor usually gives you a summary. Um, I don't know about, you know, everywhere in the world, but I, I know that in a lot of places you get um, emailed or a printed out summary of what the doctor thought was important to recap. But that's their perception, right? You have to remember that whenever there's more than one person involved, there's going to be interpretations of what was said and what is important. Frankly, even when there isn't another person involved, there's interpretations of what is important because again we're human like we talk ourselves into things there are certain ways we want to be viewed to be understood and um that has unconscious consequences in 
how we behave, whether we like it or not. So again, this could be annoying to some people, but take some notes, not just mental notes, take actual notes that you remember the things that were important to you. And when the appointment is wrapping up, again, if the doctor feels rushed, I know that you can empathize, that's all good, but you're there for a reason. It's your job to look after yourself. So it's your job to say to the doctor, hey, I have some more questions, or, you know, hey, clarify A, B, C, and D, and leave there with full information. So I actually did that, but where I failed was, I felt bad for the doctor having spent so much time with me which is ridiculous, but I was with her for an hour. The thing is, what I should have done is I should have gotten into, you know, a different mentality and I thought of, and should have thought about that this is my initial appointment. It's going to be long. They know that it's going to be long and it's not my job to look after the schedules. What my job is, is to come in with the questions that have to do with me and get the answers or at least paths to answers to the things that are bothering me. And I did do that in terms of my history, in terms of, you know, all the things that have been going on and the five years of previous questions. What I did not do well enough is ask about the tests. So she told me we're going to do this, um, I think it's called the cortisol suppression test, or something like that. Um, she told me we're going to do that. And then she explained based on the results of that test, what other tests we would do in the future. What I should have asked was, okay, so first of all, can you just walk me through the steps in terms of the timeline? Are these things are going to be automatically decided like in the lab or do I come in again and then we decide what next test to do? Are there going to be additional tests um, done with this first blood sample? Are there, is there a baseline that you're looking to determine? I mean, just ask, ask about the kinds of things that probably for them are intuitive, right? Like she knows that she's going to get test A, B, C, and D because she always gets that for every patient. I don't know that as the patient. So I can forgive her for not explaining it to me, right? She's not a mind reader either. But I could have asked that, especially because I've been through medical stuff before with my back and with migraines. So I know how much gets, how much gets kind of put in that gray area. Cause not lost in translation is just, it, it's this interpretation of like, what does the patient think is important? What does the doctor think is important? And how does the patient interpret things? And um, I'm also willing to concede the fact that because I've had a, a really rocky journey with my back, hi McLean, and I had a really rocky journey with my migraines. And I went through some really scary stuff to get those things, you know, properly diagnosed. You know, with my back, I was in such, like, I was in agony for, for months. I mean, I cried every single day out of pain. It was like a reaction almost because I would move and the pain was so, so acute that my body would just, like, I would just start crying. Like, it, it was, it was unbearable. Um, and I had to take a whole bunch of different drugs to try and help the pain because, I wasn't, this was, you know, I was, I was 29 when it started, um, and then it got really bad, no, 29, I was younger than that, but 29 was when, um, that was the year when the back drama really unfolded, and I ended, I, I ended up, um, in the ER, because I woke up, and I couldn't feel my legs, like, that, that was terrifying, I'm so happy that it was temporary, because what ended up happening is my bulging disc burst and pieces went up and down my spine and just blocked signals. So they got me to the ER, they filled me full of, um, I think steroids actually, I think cortisol maybe, I don't, whatever, I had cortisone, not a doctor, obviously. Anyway, they injected a bunch of stuff into my spine, they shrunk the pieces of disc so that signals could go back and I walked out of there. And then later I had surgery to remove the pieces. Um, with migraines, my first symptoms was when I was 16. And I was just so dizzy that 
there'll be like days when I, I just I couldn't I couldn't get up I couldn't move I couldn't walk because everything was spinning 16 it wasn't until I was 34 I think something around then 33 whatever early 30s that I finally got diagnosed with migraines so that's like on the very very low end of the spectrum 15 years up to about 20 years and the way that it happened was I was driving at night on the highway with Sailor Dog and all of a sudden like the vertigo hit and my vision went stripy it was like yellow and red and white like not stripy zig zigzaggy and stripy it was weird anyway I and I freaked out thank goodness I was in the right lane I was able to get off the highway and I pulled over and um, whatever, the rest is history. I have migraines, now I know. So when I have a slight headache even, I take pills and honestly, like it's fine, it's very manageable. Every now and then it just hits me, but like it's rarely more than a day. So it's fine. Um, but even like with, you know, all this stuff, like two major, 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 major things, I still was not able to have that presence of mind to ask the questions about the thyroid stuff when I needed to. And I should have. I should have stuck up for myself. I mean, I'm a freaking Chernobyl baby. If I suspected any thyroid issues, I should have been very, very pushy and just not cared what anyone thinks because I know that I was exposed to a major radioactive event which puts me in a higher risk than most people. I have family history on both sides of my family. Both my parents' sisters have this issue. And on one hand, yes, I need to trust the medical system and I will continue to trust the medical system that when you say things like that, they get recorded and some person or AI or whatever goes, oh yeah, that's an alarm bell. Maybe we should check so-and-so. I need to trust that. But at the same time, I think what I need to do is I need to trust, I need to trust my gut more. Honestly, every single time that I kind of go, well, you know, my gut says this and it's pretty strong, but like all the other signals don't agree. Honestly, every single time, 10 times out of 10, I should have just gone with my gut. So let's recap. <laughs> I'm gonna continue doing these diaries, these whatevers. Um, I'm not sure what format they're going to take because just me talking about myself, I don't know how helpful that is to anybody else. And um, I don't need this for my own well-being. So I think I'm going to keep switching it up. So we'll see because I do enjoy making the content. I do enjoy saying the words out loud and I do find a lot of um, value and yeah, value and the fact that somebody might watch this and they might go, oh crap, <laughs> maybe I should be a little bit firmer and just be okay with the fact that I might annoy, annoy some people, I forgot where the camera was, <laughs> that I might annoy some people in the process because in the end, I'm the only person who cares enough about me to take the responsibility for my own health. So. If this video helps one person kind of get that extra push and ask those extra questions, then I think it's worth it, no matter what. But um, yeah, there's only so much of Magda talking at herself with um, crazy hair that I think the world needs. So I'm going to switch it up. And if you have any advice or suggestions, I would love to hear those because then I can try and make content that actually... I don't know, it's enjoyable for people, it's helpful, is whatever. Um, but yeah, until then, have a lovely weekend, because for me today is Friday. I sincerely hope that this video helps nobody, because nobody is as patient in this case, which is ironic, I've never thought of myself as a patient person. Um, because no one is as patient and trusting that the medical system will do the right thing by itself. I hope that everybody who is watching this video is getting treated for the things they need to get treated. But if not, please take this as a sign that 
it's okay to be pushy it's okay to be questioning like all these things are okay at the end of the day like what's the worst possible thing your doctor doesn't like you who cares they're not meant to be your friend they're your doctor they've taken an oath they've done the training they're still going to treat you um so ask your questions okay and take notes and then ask some more questions and if you don't get answers keep asking the questions until you get an answer thanks <laughs>